some of the album titles here on our front page. Um, we have been with NetSuite since 2001, but I started with the company in 2004, so um, I've done several different sides of the NetSuite, but I currently am in charge of the marketing aspects with the analytics and all that, so that's what I guess I'm going to talk today. Um, the website is, you know, like the slide says here, we are more than just a web store. We also manage several smaller companies through NetSuite and then sell their products through their consignment and uh, vendor type sales. So, um, we've been around for a long time, so we have a large customer base, which is good for our specific genre. Um, you know, 80,000 plus. The web store with just how the music business is. There's constant influx of new items. So, you know, over 13,000 items. We had hundreds of items a week sometimes. So, um, just a little brief overview of the company. Uh, and then, you know, sorry. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So this is what we actually get to the marketing side of how we use NetSuite. We use it for everything in our business. The, the accounting uses it, the e-commerce uses it, I run the web store with it, uh, the sales team does the CRM with it, the customer service reps that work with the customers all integrated through NetSuite. Um, some of the custom things that I have done with my work in NetSuite is we have set up a special system with, I mean, I guess it's very unique to the music business with the pre-order. So an item gets released, they create the item inside of NetSuite, put it up for sale, start the promotion, and the, you know, send the promotions to the band, to the label who owns the band, and so everybody starts trying to get sales for an item before it's release date. Um, and some of the customizations, the customizations I did with that with NetSuite is create a custom field which would recruit like the, the release date or a sound scan field. And so with a, a customer look at the item and says, oh, it hasn't even arrived yet. So it knows that it's a pre-order instead of a item that's simply on stock. So the pre-orders for our company has it used to be much smaller percent of our business, but after we realized how strong it is, and all the marketing tools that are available for it, it's grown to sometimes half of our total income, sometimes more than half, but it's definitely one of the largest part of our income. And the reason being is that with the marketing available for it, is that there's the buzz for the new record, you know, no one's heard it yet. The we can push it to our customers through our newsletter and through our third party websites. The band is ready to promote it, the band's gonna go on tour and promote it. The labels or the distributors that are also available with our record are promoting it. So it, it's a huge set of tools for that. Um, some of the other things we use to say promote a pre-order is, for example, we you know release a new album with a, a other label that is other like similar music styles. And we create a promotional code with also an affiliate attached. So I, I go to the records they want to say, you know, we can not only give you a discount for the item, but we can also give you credit for the sales that you're sending us through your promotion through our affiliate program. So I create them as an affiliate, which they get commissions for on their sales, and we send them a promotional code as well. So the label, which is doing promotion for us, is offering us is it's in their best benefit for one, they sell a record, and two, they're making money off of their promotional work. And then they offer a discount to the customer who, you know, that turns uses that promotional code to check out and you know they get X X number of percent off. And what we gain most out of it, more than just that sale, since we've offered so much of a discount, is that we get the customer. I mean, and that's the biggest thing to us is that we do our job right. We do, you know, quality service, quality customer service, and then we have the customer, and the customer, you know, it's worth more than the sale. 
you had mentioned the other way you had a very interesting use of, of your shopping cart. And mm -hmm. like most um, e-commerce stores, you pointed out you had very little abandonment of your carts. Maybe you can talk a little bit about how your, uh, how your shoppers probably kind of uniquely use their carts. Oh yeah, see that's something that was very interesting to me when you brought that up because like you you asked me what was the problem with it, card abandonment and we really have I mean I could look in my what that's right now and see a lot of cards with pending items in them. Um, but what's unique about it is that our customers aren't like they're not a bit like checking out all the items and then abandoning them there. A lot of our like we have a very, very returned customer base. So the customers come, they log into their account, they see the new items, they add a few more and then maybe at the end of the week when they get paid, you know, or they they go back and order all of the items. So they sort of use the like the shopping cart feature as sort of like a Amazon type wish list, or like you know just remembers what they wanted to get, or you know they they select a few items and then wait for them to come in stock and then purchase them all at once. So it just and that's not like the traditional sense where people are coming and abandoning the car. We actually encourage it because you know we can almost use it as a type of sales for testing. The same with like the free orders. So we have a very high percentage of like the amount of car abandonment that actually seems to turn into sales. You know, after a few weeks or a month maybe. So, uh, the other thing I did want to talk about that we talked before was. The unique way that we use our affiliates is that with our affiliates don't have to be another major website. We go very, very like small and grassroots with our affiliate program. So we have you know a band that sells maybe one or two records, or we have a website that just does a few music reviews. So we have hundreds of these affiliates. Like they range from like full on blown websites to small blogs to MySpace pages to Facebook pages to uh, just bands in general, and we, we set them up as the partner access level in this week. All of our affiliates are set up with the advanced partner login that you talked about earlier in the presentation, where they get a login, uh, see the leads and the customers that they're generating, and we also give them the access to sometimes create promotional codes based on how well they're doing. So they actually have access to create their own promotion on their own. If they want to like help you know, promote their records for a certain week, we don't have to actually be involved in that. Um, and I mean, I feel it's very much the same, but what's unique about how NetSuite is set up is that once a customer, like once a, an affiliate sends a customer to us, they get attached to their affiliate account for life. So that's, Amazon is all based on your sales volume per month. If that makes sense. so, it's like, and they have different service levels. So if you get over X amount of dollars, and you get more percent than you would. But with us, we get a flat commission fee for your customers for life. So if a customer comes and reorders, then they get sales commission off every order that that customer makes, which is a much better way of doing things for Amazon because it has a more incentive for affiliate sites to go with us and to Amazon because that's one of our direct competitors. So, um, 